and we know that this crisis is multidimensional. At the same moment, it's economic, it's ecological, it's a food, it's an energy crisis, each which reinforces and makes the sum of the parts much the sum much greater than the separate parts. And of course, what the what we are dealing with is this contradiction where we've come up against the finite resources of the planet. And so endless growth is leading to unprecedented levels of natural disasters. Capitalism is destroying the biospheres on which all our species have to survive. Not just in terms of climate, but in terms of the destruction of our water, resources, soils, forests, etc. And this crisis is a crisis of the neoliberal mode of capitalism, which itself was an outcome of an earlier attempt to resolve the crisis experienced in capital, by capitalism in the 70s of overproduction and overaccumulation. So the outcome, the, the, the form of globalization and financialization were itself attempts to deal with the blockages that capitalism was experiencing, but, it's, but the very process itself has deepened uh, the crisis, for example, in terms of eroding the capacity of working people to consume. So the problems of overproduction become even more extreme. And the financialization of the economy and the shift from production to finance um, creates, of course, ever increasing amounts of financial instability, the bubble and bust uh, phenomena that we experience on a much more uh, rapid scale. And of course, the, the, ex the extension of credit and the growth of new financial instruments to offset the crisis in demand has led directly to the current financial crisis that, flew, that came out of the United States. But at the same time, the depth of the crisis and perhaps this is what the two previous speakers were drawing our attention to, is not just at these levels. It is also at the social level, which I described earlier, which Africa has been experiencing from a wave of crisis, but it's also at the cultural, ideological, and, and organizational level. The immediate impact, of course, has been to disorganize, to demoralize, the, dis the dispossessed classes and other layers of the oppressed. So we're dealing also, which is the paradox, if you like, of a crisis at the level of the subject, the crisis at, of the ability to resist and I think we see this in a very telling way in Africa, where successive years of wars, of um, the export of its resources, its plundering of its natural basis, the tremendous destabilization of, uh, of, of local communities, etc., has created massive disillusionment. The sense of the struggle for independence, and in that very struggle, the making of a new person, throwing off and, 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 and winning back your dignity, throwing off the shackles of a slavery that colonialism in Africa implied, that is long gone in the memory of many communities. So I think it is, it's all of the above, and it's this that is extremely important for us to consider.
Now, when we ask ourselves about the impact of the crisis in Africa, we can say, at a very general sense, it is an outcome of the way Africa was integrated into the global economy as a result of colonialism, but intensified through structural adjustment transmitted through the debt crisis. So we cannot understand the impact of the crisis in Africa outside of the, the what we can call almost the second wave of recolonization in Africa, which was the, the process of dispossession through the mode of structural adjustment imposed by the IMF and the World Bank. And that process, of course, was an outcome of the failure of the independence developmental state project uh, that came out of the independence struggle. And of course the crisis and the vulnerability of Africa to, into the crisis is worsened through the impact of trade liberalization through, firstly in the form of structural ad adjustment but now through the World Trade Organization and through specific regional trade agreements particularly those that are being authored by Europe in the form of the European Partnership Agreements and so when we look at the conditions of the conditionalities attached to those they force more and more the commodification of life itself in Africa in the way that Edgardo was speaking about earlier. Now, I mentioned earlier that as a result of increased demand in China for basic minerals and other natural resources, there occurred between, we can say, 2002-2006, a commodity price boom that many African uh, economies was a were able to benefit from. And they were able to use some of the surpluses now to start to overcome the legacy of underdevelopment, start to uh, undertake certain um, uh, infrastructural investment projects, etc. I don't want to overstate that because a lot of it was also siphoned off into wars, into, cor into by corrupt elites, etc. But that was a process. And when the global crisis hit, the uh, the prices of commodities collapsed, and of course, state revenue and the revenue with which to undertake various uh, basic uh, provisions of services, of, of uh, infrastructure and so on, uh, collapsed. And Africa, unlike Europe, North, North, uh, North America and perhaps Latin America, I don't know, didn't have the capacity, doesn't have the capacity to impose or implement counter-cyclical measures. So it wasn't able to stimulate demand by borrowing more, investing, etc., like which was done in other parts. Because of the extreme uh, 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 debt problems that, that it faces and the way in which it is generally cut off from international uh, financial markets and is only able to uh, uh, obtain credit through the IMF or the World Bank or through a certain number of international banks to finance uh, trade and so many of the credit lines to finance trade were cut off by these international banks and again that meant uh, a big uh, drop in the capacity of uh, for production uh, following this 2002-2006 uh, period. For example, the rate of investment in sub-Saharan Africa declined by 12% uh, during, the, during this process. And although the, you had a uh, decline in commodity prices, 
not all commodity prices because food didn't decline as rapidly as other commodities and so Africa was hit with a double whammy if you like because it was uh, losing on uh, its, its uh, revenue from exports of primary commodities but didn't gain when the price of food came down because it's a net food uh, importer and so you can imagine what the social consequences are at the level of hunger and malnutrition um, and of course as a result of this internal demand limited as it is also collapsed exacerbating uh, the uh, recession and what we saw was an average decline of one two percent in 2009 compared to economic growth of four and a half percent in the in 2008